have a new technology. It's called the Mises Academy. It's a wonderful environment for, for teaching, online yeah. teaching, so that you can enter into the living rooms or the, you know, Starbucks is all over the world, you know, teaching, and you're going to be teaching a class for us in the fall. That's right. And, and before I mention that, I, I want to say that I don't want to exaggerate the significance of the Mises Academy, but I think it may be the greatest development in the history of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Every but, time the subject comes up, I want to sing the theme song to the Jack, Jetsons. Dum, yeah, bum, exactly. Ba, da, like this shouldn't. Yeah, da, 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 exactly. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, yeah. I know it. I know so, it. The, yeah, the only improvement would be when we can be in a spaceship and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, but yeah, I'm teaching a course on the New Deal. Yeah. Because I, I think this is one of these things that you got to just get down cold. And your people, I don't want to say your opponents, you know, because, you know, the human race has a certain solidarity, right? You know, they're, they're friends you haven't met yet, basically, but people who are on the other side of this argument about the consequences of the New Deal, a lot of them are just average people who just, they're just repeating what they've been taught in school. But if you really know the history, I mean, really know, not just have a few libertarian talking points, but really know the history, I mean, you can overwhelm any argument that's made against you. So, and... It's not like that's all we're interested in is winning arguments. We, we want to acquire the knowledge. But the fact is, in this area, we've got to get this right because he's such, Franklin Roosevelt is such an icon that if, if we begin to chip away at this icon, then, you know, things, things start to fall after that. And it's strange, isn't it? The New Deal is the prototype of almost all planning. Uh, and all, all stimulus. Yeah, right. And, and it's, assumed, it's assumed to be a wonderful success or its only failure was not going far enough. Right. And I, I, I want to look... At, in fact, we even have people who try to claim that the New Deal was actually really a stunning success if you look at the numbers and oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it still goes on. People say... Yeah. So I, I, want to, I want to evaluate all that. Well, let's go through those numbers. Yeah. Look exactly what they are. We'll, we'll look at the, the, the progress or lack thereof. All that stuff. Uh, but, but, but really starting with the stock market crash... And looking at Austrian business cycle theory, looking at the the relationship between the central bank in the U.S. and in, in England, and then the Herbert Hoover thing. We'll get that down. Now, again, not just superficially, but we'll just get it down and look at the arguments that Hoover was, uh, you know, was, was not spending enough and so on and all that. We're going to look at the actual numbers and the actual policies, which is very rare. I mean, Rothbard does it. A few others do it. And then, yeah. then get into Roosevelt. So we're covering the economics. We're covering the the, the, the history. Uh, we're covering the, the law because we're yeah. we're going to look at the Supreme Court. What would, we'll read some Supreme Court cases cool. and and just because it's interesting to read some of these these yeah. opinions, the Supreme Court opinions, because they seem like they're coming from another universe. You never imagine an opinion like this being written, uh, and and seeing the arguments they made, and then noting noting the transformation of the court over the years uh, after uh, thirty seven. So so the law will be in there as well. So we're going to look at this from a lot of different angles. Yeah, and who's the class designed for? Well, it's designed basically for anybody. Yeah. It's designed with I'm not assuming any prior knowledge. Right. So some people may feel like, well, I already knew a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, but I'm I want to start from ground zero. Yeah. And build up so that by the time Absolutely. it's all over, you say, okay, this was worthwhile. I've got a really substantial background, yeah. but I'm not going to assume people know Austrian business cycle theory or anything. I want yeah. it to be something that homeschoolers could could get, and so that therefore homeschoolers will continue their great tradition of crushing everybody in debate, yeah. give them all the ammunition they need. But then also people who, just adults who feel like they were deprived of, the, they, they didn't get the education they wanted to get or they, you know, or they got propaganda or whatever, they, they want to just get this stuff. Yeah. It's really for everybody and the, we'll have nice discussions. The demographics of the Mises Academy so far have been all over the map, all over the place. Yeah, it's software, isn't software, that great? Yeah, yeah. software CEOs, we've got uh, people working in international or, um, American companies ab abroad who are anxious to continue their education, you know, uh, high school students in our home schools, and also matriculating students in college. It just occurred to me, how great would it be to take your class at the same time you're in a, yeah, in a class? Exactly. You know, right? Wouldn't That's that right. be fun? And then, and then you can come in, and when we have discussion, you can say, well, my professor says so-and-so. <laughs> what do I say to him? And then we'll all join together, not just me, but all other participants say, oh, why don't you go tell him yeah. this or that thing? Yeah. And my hope is also, well, not my hope, my, my, my absolute intention is that uh, once I'm done with this book project that I'm working on right now, we're, we're, you and I are speaking in the summer of 2010, once I've finished this book project, by 2011, I want to start offering more general courses, survey courses yeah. of American history, starting with the colonial period and going, going up as far as I can get it in eight-week eight segments and, and give, it to, give, give American history 
uh, you know, from a point of view that I think uh, Mises people will find interesting. You know, it's so different being in the Mises Academy as versus a big classroom where you're, where you're teaching at a university level. For me, I feel like, being on the receiving end of these lectures, that uh, Thomas DiLorenzo or Hunt Tooley, whoever happens to be teaching, or in, in your case, you know, it'll be it'll Tom, Tom Woods in the, in, in the fall, has come into my living room and come into my dining room and is speaking to me individually. I mean, it's, you don't get that effect in a regular classroom. I would say that there are aspects of it that are that are better than a physical classroom for that reason. Oh, it absolutely, seems, yeah. It's intimate. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, it's it's because I I followed just just to yeah. have a sense of it. I followed a little bit of Bob Murphy's course. Yeah, Bob Murphy. And that's exactly it. And, and there he is with his coat and tie, yeah. sitting there in his. And in he's his right room. there on your on your computer. It's live. You're able to ask him questions. Ask him questions, and then you know even while he's talking, and he'll try and field them. But but then afterward, he'll just have a question answer period, and that. You know, there's no bell that rings and makes you leave. You know, if people are all done, you stop. <laughs> but but you can just get people hang around. And sometimes, hours, you know, yeah. I'll be inclined to just hang around. And, yeah. and then maybe even the, the, the topic moves on to something else. And we talk about that for a did while. You ever, did it ever occur to you watch, watching this? How's the regular classroom going to survive? And, 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 and yeah, yeah. Who's going to want that? Yeah. 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 I mean, here you can get exactly the courses you want by people you trust. And, and to be able to also interact with people who are of like mind in the course and yeah. get to know them. I mean, really, you you'll, and you'll learn a lot from your fellow students, too. I mean, it, it can be extremely enriching. And by the way, I intend to be a student in some of these other yeah. courses, but maybe under an assumed name. So, <laughs> no, no, no. so if I make a mistake, nobody will say, ah, this guy turns out he's a charlatan after <laughs> right. all. No, you don't have to be graded in the Mises Academy. But of that's course, right. If you want to be, that's fine. But you have the option of just saying, I just want to audit this and, right. and, and so on. Are you a tough grader? I, I, well, I'm... I used to be, but but for these people, I'm going to be such a pushover. <laughs> like, look, look, I love you guys. You know, I mean, that's, that's an A. Come on. <laughs> well, we look, uh, we look very much look forward to this, Tom. And Thanks, Jeff. This Me too. This class and many more in the future. Thanks a lot. Okay.